Hey Darren, Ms. Darren, this is Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your new Gucci model number 4251. The color is 4SI, which is the shiny black. So let me begin. Let me take everything out. This is the original packaging that Gucci sends them to me in. This is your Gucci case, your Gucci cloth, and of course your Gucci shiny black and gold frame. Beautiful frame with their classic chained i think that's what it's called it's like the links of a chain their logo in that so um, this little plastic sleeve comes on the temple during shipping i'm going to take that off and i'm going to take out their original demo lenses and put your italian frame into my italian my italian santinelli this is the le 1000 patternless edger and i'm going to trace the shape of your left lens and then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the right here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Gucci frame and you will receive free, clear, single vision prescription lenses. And high quality prescription lenses at that for free. So, I'm going to pull up the shape of your lens onto the computer. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm being that I'm cutting for a metal frame. So let me go ahead and begin. Your right lens reads plus a quarter minus one at 177, plus a quarter minus one at 177. So I'm gonna put the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 177. Take your lens out of its protective sleeve. Put the power drum on plus a quarter. Put the lens in. Rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly and I found the optical center of the lens Check your stigmatism correction. Everything looks good and lined up So I'm gonna put a couple dots three dots as a matter of fact on your lens which might be too light for you to see so I'm gonna take my pen and Darken them for you. That's one two and three and this is the right lens I'm gonna do the same thing now for the left which reads plus one minus one at 179 plus one minus one at 179 move the axis wheel ever so slightly put the power drum on plus one rotate your lens until the sphere power comes in clearly put a couple dots on there come on dots Let me make sure you're dark enough so everyone can see you at home let me grab my pen and darken all those. That's one, two, and three. And that is the left lens. So this is a block. I need to attach this to your lens for it to cut. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker. And wouldn't you know it, 3M, the same people who make the post-it notes, notes make a double-sided adhesive sticker. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the block, pull the tape away. And essentially what I'm looking into is uh, just like the crosshairs of a scope. I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal one. And that's why I put the three dots on there because your lens cannot rotate. It has to go in there perfectly. So I'm going to line those red dots up on that horizontal line. That vertical line is going to go right through the optical center of the lens. And I'm going to do the same thing now. That's why that red dot is dead center. That's exactly where it's going to sit in front of your pupil. I need to do the same thing for the left lens now. Pull that away, get everything lined up, and I'm gonna put the block on that. And I'm going to take your right lens and put it into the Chuck, or as I like to say, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. All right, bad humor, I know, I know. But these calipers are going to come down, and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of the frame onto the lens, always starting with the rear surface, the convex, I'm sorry, concave surface, which is closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the front surface of the lens, which is the convex side of the lens. All the while measuring the thickness of the lens, which is very minimal in your case, but knowing where to place the lens inside the frame so it fits best. Now the actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel that acts like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your polycarbonate material. This wheel in the center with that channel, that valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it fits stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door, but I just want you to see as your prescription lens touches down onto the cutting wheel. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable and your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber. 
Not only that, they have UVA, UVB protection, and it comes with a great scratch coating to protect the lens. Not only is it all that, but it's also aspheric. Aspheric means not round. A round spherical lens gives you that ugly fish bowl cosmetic, that fish, that fish eye look. These lenses, aspheric means it's much flatter, much thinner, and it's going to fit best cosmetically inside this frame. So, because I know no matter how beautiful the frame is, if your lenses are jacked up, you just ain't going to wear them. Now, if you notice your lens is still the last of the flatness from cutting, it's now onto the bevel wheel to get the knife like bevel. And if you notice, I'm just pulling that off. There's water running in the background that's to collect dust like this. Two jets are going to kick in at the very end. These water jets, one in the front, one in the back. And essentially it's going to wash away optical debris like this, which is optical sawdust. There you go. It's going to wash all that away. And once that comes out, we'll see about getting it mounted into the frame. Okay, so it is stopping now. I'm going to go ahead and take your lens out. I want to dry it off so it's not slippery. And you still have some rough edges that are left over from the cutting cycle, so I want to smooth those out using my handstone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running, and my finger gets warm due to the friction. Because that friction allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. Essentially, I've melted away your rough edges and this white powdery substance you see me scraping off is called Schwarf. I'm going to use my thumbnail to scrape all of that off until it's gone and once it's all been removed from your lens and onto the counter, I carefully collect it neatly into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor because I get to have fun while I'm at work too. It's not all work. Um, so I need to go ahead and get your lens mounted in this frame. I'm going to use my little Phillips head screwdriver to loosen everything. I'm going to go ahead and get your lens mounted. It's still alive. It's fighting me. It's fighting me. And then I want to pinch down. Oops, oop, oop, oop. Not yet. Not yet. It's not going in that easy. It's a little nervous being in front of the camera for the first time. So, I want to take my screwdriver and tighten everything down perfectly. Righty tighty. Now I want to go ahead and begin working on your left lens. I'm going to flip that over to L, which means not right, and hit start. And the same thing that happened before. The calipers are going to come down, but this time they're going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame to make sure it'll fit. Always starting with the rear surface, and then moves over and trace the front surface. And as soon as this lens begins cutting, I'm going to continue to work on your right lens. Can you visualize the shape of your lens? Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. So this block is no longer needed, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Pull the sticker off. And I'm going to leave those red dots on there for now. I'm going to use that to measure later, but I want to spin the axis wheel back to 177 to verify this lens is cut perfectly. I'm going to put that in right above the red dot at your optical center. And I'm getting plus a quarter, one tick mark past the zero. And then I'm on minus 75 because you have one diopter of astigmatism. And let me explain how all that works. The unit of measurement in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, and goes in quarter increments starting at zero 
also known as Plano, which is non-prescription. Then goes up from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, 1 and a quarter, 150, and so on. So you need very little correction. You only need one step of correction for your right eye to get everything the correct size. But you need four steps for your astigmatism. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It's like someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It just means shape. Everyone freaks out when they hear that. But what astigmatism does, it makes letters 6 and F, or I'm sorry, the numbers 6 and 8 look alike, or the letters P and F look alike. It's the fine tune knob. So this first number gets everything the correct size. This second number takes away the fuzzy edges. This last number, the 177 and the 179 for your left eye, just tells us where to tune that fine turn knob to make everything nice and crisp. So, you actually need four steps of correction to magnify. Without your glasses on, things are much smaller than they appear in real life. So when you put your glasses on, not only do they magnify to the correct size, but it takes away those fuzzy edges. And this just tells us where to tune it to. So 177, a straight line is also known as a 180. You have zero over here with 90 in the center and 180 back over here. So we would turn that fine tune knob to 177 for your right eye and a little bit further for your left eye, which is 179. By the way, this frame does sell for $320. And of course you get free high quality prescription lenses with that. So I'm gonna take the lens out of the chuck. Back to the handstone real quick for the safety bevel. I'm gonna smooth all that out. Use my thumbnail to scrape all that off your lens. Drop that on the counter, and once it's on the counter, you know it's coming. Wipe it on the floor. You know that never gets old. I love doing that. Oh, see, almost dropped the lens. My KGB like reflexes there. I'm telling on myself. I say KGB so no one knows that I work for the CIA as my day job. I'm throwing you off the track. That's what our CIA agents do. So I've loosened the eye wire screw for your left lens. I'm going to get this mounted into your frame. Tighten that back down. It ain't working. It ain't working. Come on you. Come on you. You still want to do that. Alright, let me take this down a little bit more by hand. I'm just decreasing the diameter of your lens so it's going to fit better inside the frame. Your lenses are so flat but that's why it's having difficulty going in there, believe it or not, because I get them as thin as possible. It's a little bit more challenging to work with, but that shouldn't be your problem. That's my problem on my end. So I get that screw tightened down and actually it's not tight yet, not tight yet. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly. There we go. There we go. That's looking better. So now I can go ahead and take this block off. I want to go ahead and verify the prescription of the left lens. So I'm going to put it in my lens. I'm going to right above this red dot. Put the axis wheel back to 179 and read the prescription of plus one minus one. So I turn until the sphere power comes in clearly at plus one. And then minus one in astigmatism drops me down to zero. Because when you add plus one and minus one together you get zero. And that's where we are at. Now your pupillary distance is 62. So I'm going to put the zero on my PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. And when we hold it up on the left, you see 62 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. I want to go ahead and remove the red dots from your lenses. And this is where I take the time to explain to everyone that 90%, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. That's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. So when you get these, and either if they're too loose or too tight, which could happen, but more than likely if one side is higher than the other just stop by your local shop and they'll get them adjusted for you but I'm going to make sure they're in standard alignment also known as a three-point stance with the three points being one two and the bottom of the frame being three I set it on the counter and press down there is no wobble flip them over do the same thing there is no wobble I make sure each beautiful Gucci temple closes and overlaps the other temple perfectly in the same amount of tension on each hinge that there is so that's that. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Ms. Darren, I hope you enjoyed watching me as I made prescription lenses for your Gucci 
4251 color 4SI and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.